Hello, good evening. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging James. How many people in the world are doing what this crazy guy is doing, right? Full time, full time, yeah. The only other man I know that's doing that is Jeffrey Smith who started the Institute for Responsible Technology. He's the guy out there talking about GMOs and the dangers of GMO. He goes all over the world. That's all he does full time every day. James is the only other guy I know full time every day. This is his world. He's trying to be the catalyst for change. So we come and we sit here and we support him, but I'm going to ask all of you, whatever he's asking you to do tonight, can you give 10 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month or whatever you can afford just give it to him for whatever he's asking you to be a part of to keep the momentum going. I have no idea what he's going to ask you, but I want this guy continuing to do what he's doing because he's trying to change the world, and that's what we need. That's really what we need, yeah? So I didn't know that I was going to start like this, but I am going to start like this. Um, uh, we don't have time to mess around anymore. I'm just going to tell you two studies that I didn't put the slides in for before I do the slides. The first one is the World Wildlife Fund. They published a study almost three years ago that, that between 1970 and 2011, in 41 years, there has been on average a 58% reduction in populations of all vertebrate species on the planet. Anything with a spine. The birds, the insects, the fish, the mammals, there's a 58% reduction in the last 41 years. For the birds, it's 35%. For the mammals near freshwater, it's 78%. 78% of the beavers are gone. The porcupines, they're gone. They're just gone in 41 years. Why? They're drinking the water. And if you were drinking the water coming out of the streams by your house, you'd get cancer quicker. You'd be unable to reproduce just like the animals. Second study, a meta-analysis. And everybody here knows, but for those at home, hi guys at home, wherever your home is. For those at home, a meta-analysis is when you look at a number of studies on one subject. 186 studies on sperm count in healthy men, not in fertile men, healthy men between 1974 and 2011, so 37 years, almost the same time period. 59% reduction in sperm count in the average healthy guy, 59%. That doesn't mean anything to anybody until you realize that scientists say they worry about extinction of a species at 72%. And we've lost 59% in 37 years. What do you think is gonna happen in the next 20 years? As Roseanne, Rosanna Dana would say, you think, <laughs> right? Who conquered the Romans? No one. In the 400 AD, they built water pipes through the city. The water pipes were made of lead. And they put lead in the wine to preserve the wine. They got lead poisoning that made them infertile. The Romans disappeared. What do you think is going to happen here? James said by 2026, one child in two is going to be the autism spectrum. What do you think is going to happen here? When are we going to wake up? Let me give you a demonstration. How many of you know or suspect you may have a sensitivity to wheat, to gluten? Show of hands, please. Hold them high for a minute. Hi. Look around the room. About 85% of the room. Thank you. And how many of you will have a little gluten once in a while? Show of hands, please. Look around the room. Now, how about when I tell you that Holland at Harvard and his team in 2014 published a paper, every human gets intestinal permeability every time they're exposed to wheat. Every human, every time. Mrs. Patient, you have an entire new body every seven years. Some cells regenerate very quickly, like the inside lining of your gut every three to five days. Some cells are really slow, like bone cells and brain cells. We have a whole new body every seven years, so you have toast for breakfast. You tear the lining of your gut, but it heals. You have a sandwich for lunch, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. Pasta for dinner, you tear the lining of the gut, but it heals. Day after week after month after year, until you don't heal anymore. Then you get pathogenic intestinal permeability. And that's what I'll talk about in a minute. And that happens at two years old, 22 years old, or 92 years old. Whenever you cross the line, 
with the straw that broke the camel's back. And everyone in here, the functional medicine healthcare practitioners, yeah, I can have a little gluten once in a while. No, you can't. No, you can't. And I, I won't do the science on that tonight, but I'll just tell you, and everybody here will get it, the only food I know of that by you have uh, 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 memory B cell production when you have elevated antibodies is to wheat. I don't know of memory B cell production to dairy or to soy or to eggs, but to wheat. If you get elevated antibodies, you now have memory B cells. That means the rest of your life. And ask an immunologist, what does it take to activate memory B cells? One one thousandth of the initial vaccination dosage, like for uh, measles. One one thousandth of the dose. That's all it takes, and you activate the memory B cell. So have croutons on your salad, pull the croutons off. You don't say, oh, they put croutons on, pull them off. The crumbs on the salad is all it takes to activate the inflammatory cascade. You've got elevated antibodies for two to four months from the crumbs on the salad one time, if you have memory B cells that get activated. It's like, what? what? Okay, that's slide one. <laughs> this is not a Photoshop photo. How many years did he practice to be able to do this? How many years? How many years does it take to really dial this down? It takes a while to dial it down, but you start with one step at a time, right? Just one step at a time. So pathogenic intestinal permeability occurs in all food-related disorders. Impaired permeability is present in all subjects with an adverse reaction to food, IgE or non-IgE reaction. They all have permeability. And when the analysis was carried out, all these patients they checked had been allergen-free for a minimum of six months. They hadn't eaten the food for six months. They still had permeability. Why? It's the microbiome. The microbiome hasn't changed, right? In addition, for the first time, we report a statistically significant association between the severity of the referred symptoms and the increasing of the intestinal permeability index. The more your symptoms, the more permeability you've got. That's all I'm going to say about how prevalent permeability is, because we're all healthcare practitioners, so you know some of this already. But I want to talk about what do you do about it. Oh, pathogenic intestinal permeability occurs within five minutes. I've got to show you this. I have to show you this one. So this is confocal endomicroscopy. They took um, IBS failure patients at Harvard. Complete failure for at least a year to everything they tried to do. These people were suffering dramatically. And they, then, you know, because it's Harvard, they said, well, maybe food has something to do with it. <laughs> so they did confocal endomicroscopy where, and they, they exposed these people to cow's milk or wheat or yeast or soy, and then the, the uh, 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 controls to see, did they have a reaction in their gut? And at baseline, the villi were closely attached, and th this is confocal endomicroscopy on the left. That's electron microscope on the right. So it's a camera they put down in the gut, and then they put food down there to see, is there any changes? What they did was they injected a dye into the veins, knowing that that dye would go right past the, uh, the, the villi of the gut on its way traveling back to be eliminated. And then they, they watched when they exposed them to food, could they see the dye? Within five minutes of exposure to foods, intraepithelial lymphocytes increase, epithelial gaps formed, and the spaces widened. So there's the dye in the lumen of the intestines. Here's a normal. Here's the dye within five minutes starting to leak out. Now it's in the lumen of the intestines, completely out in the lumen. This is intestinal permeability. And the uh, baseline IBS uh, increased five-fold within five minutes. The epithelial breaks increased by 110% within five minutes. And here's one cell that they followed over a five minute period, and you can see how it just burst and the dye came out. That's intestinal permeability. But I wanted to show you this video. This says it all, this is very cool. This is five minutes of photos in about 45 seconds. Watch what happens here as they're exposed to the allergenic food. You see the white coming out closer to the surface, coming closer to the surface of the lumen. Now look at the space between the cells, the white starting to leak out there. This is permeability in action. This is when it's happening with exposure to an allergenic food. You get a leaky gut within five minutes of the food getting down into your small intestine. This is what leak, the, the pictures are so cool. You see this and you go, wow, look at this, whoa. Okay, and then I'll just skip the rest of this about it, but it was within five minutes. 
And then I wanted to talk, give you a, a pearl to take home tonight. Just one pearl. First, how do you arrest pathogenic intestinal permeability? You have to put the fire out. You have to put the fire out in the gut when you're going to try and heal the gut. You have to reduce the inflammation. So the first thing is stop throwing gasoline on the fire. That's the first thing, obviously. You have to find out what the foods are that they're sensitive to. And then I call it a pleiotropic approach. A pleiotropic approach means all roads lead. There's a lot of different ways that you can heal the gut. And I'm just going to show you one way tonight of many. So intestinal alkaline phosphatase is a glycoprotein anchored in the apical membrane of the enterocytes. It's got multiple roles in maintenance of gut barrier function. It detoxes LPS. It reduces systemic inflammation. It protects the gut barrier, and it modulates the gut microbiota. When you have adequate amounts of intestinal alkaline phosphatase, LPS binds to it and is escorted out in the stool. When you don't have enough intestinal alkaline phosphatase, LPS binds to toll-like receptor 4, triggers inflammation in the gut, intestinal permeability, and endotoxin into the bloodstream. IAP, intestinal alkaline phosphatase, is a very important good guy. Well, another important mechanism is the dephosphorylation of LPS by the enzyme alkaline intestinal alkaline phosphatase, which induces a hundredfold reduction in the toxicity of LPS. So you want intestinal alkaline phosphatase in your gut. How do you increase intestinal alkaline phosphatase? Apple-derived pectin significantly increases intestinal alkaline phosphatase. Mrs. Patient, take four apples, wash them organic, cut the seeds out, chop them up into spoon-sized pieces, put them in a pot, add water to about the third the height of the apples, add some cinnamon, turn it on high. Five minutes, look at it. If there's a shine on the apples in five to eight minutes, you're done. The shine is the release of the pectin from the apple, so it's easily accessible to the gut microbiota, which will produce the intestinal alkaline phosphatase. And Mrs. Patient, I want you to have two tablespoons of applesauce every day. You can have more if you want, but every day you and your family have two tablespoons of the applesauce you make because you're increasing intestinal alkaline phosphatase, which has so many benefits in your gut. It's one of those little base hits that win the ball game. And James, that's the point I wanted to make. So James is ready with the hook. He said, you got 10 minutes, man. That's it. You got 10 minutes. So it's apple. Apple derived pectin is the main soluble fiber in apples fermented by the gut microbiota in the colon to produce intestinal alkaline phosphatase. Compared to high fat group, when, when you give animals high fat diets, if you give them a high fat diet with uh, pectin, you get a 37% reduction in weight gain, 29% reduction in cholesterol, 11% reduction in tumor necrosis factor, 12% reduction in IL-6, 75% reduction in endotoxemia, and 47% reduction or increase in intestinal alkaline phosphatase levels. By eating applesauce, just by eating applesauce, this is where an apple a day keeps the doctor away. This is why that phrase came out. It's the pectin in the apples that increase intestinal alkaline phosphatase that has all these benefits for you. Now, I'm hoping that this just one pearl is something that you'll implement into your practice for the rest of your lives. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much. All right. All right,